bitches. You notice I didn't say what's up, because I know what's up. I am shooting this on Thursday, January 7th, 2021, and it's been a terrifying and exhausting 24 hours that continues on in history. <laughs> so I am here. I want to know how you are. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're doing everything you can to... Um, you know, be in radical self-care today. Take care of your feelings. Take care of your body. Ground. Keep yourself grounded. Um, moderate your intake of news. Be aware of what kind of energies you're running through your body. So I'm here, the Zen Witch, to bring you an unboxing and something to distract you a little bit and bring you some joy, I hope. I know it's bringing me joy because this is a gift deck that I received the other day. And I wanna say um, there's a link below to my wish list. If you do choose to uh, send me a gift deck and get a reading, um, please make sure you send a, a note that tells me who you are. Unless you want to be anonymous, that's fine too. But if you want me, to, if you want to know, if you want me to know, oh my God, this is going to be so interesting because I am mentally drained. <laughs> but if you want me to know who you are and give you a reading by name, um, please include a note in with it. And I have to say that sometimes Amazon doesn't put notes in because I've had people that have sent notes and they didn't arrive in the package. So um, make sure that, and even if you don't put a note in, I will still give a reading for the person that sent me this deck, so you will still get a personal reading. All right, let's do this. Um, wait, I haven't lit my charcoal. Let's light our charcoal. Sometimes it helps to set something on fire, as long as it's just a charcoal that's going to sit in a safe container, right? And as you can see, I had uh, I burned a hole in my cloth yesterday. Ah, oh, well. All right. Colette Baron reed The Spirit Animal Oracle, a 68-card deck and guidebook. Uh, same on all there. The Spirit Animal Oracle. The spirits residing in the natural world have much to share, and the secrets of their forgotten language are now available to you through the Spirit Animal Oracle, who, which was given to me by my friend Sherry down in Tennessee. This is somebody I personally know, but I only see her usually one time a year. And of course, COVID prevented that this year. So thank you, Sherry, darling. Thank you so, so much for this gift. Um, okay. They urge us to reclaim our essential truth. And these are the spirits in the natural world that we are one in spirit connected to every living thing on this earth in a unified consciousness and everything in space too. It's all one thing. With the draw of a card, you can share in this wisdom and better navigate your life, move beyond the obstacles of your perceived limitations, and tune in to your infinite potential. Represented in the 68 cards of this beautifully illustrated oracle deck are the higher spirits of different animals, insects, fish, and birds. Every animal has a transcendent archetypal symbolism a universal meaning holding a message of deep, enduring truth. With guidance from intuitive master and oracle expert Colette baron reed you can now awaken to your partnership with spirit to co-create your reality in service to the world. Printed in China, and of course down here, cover art Gina Della Grataglia, as is her way, except for I think one of the most recent decks, uh, Colette baron reed does not credit her artists in a very prominent way. Okay, so as I open this box, this is different, um, and we don't have, a, this is Hay House, by the way, so typical, but Hay House boxes usually open this way. This one is a, one of the ones that I like so much because that satisfying little snap when it closes. Um, okay, the message here kind of on a separate piece that's glued on says the spirits residing in the natural world have much to share and the secrets of their forgotten language are now available to you so okay oh interesting do you see what's going on here you have to really have it closed properly on this side before it will close over the top because of this piece that's added on okay 
We have a nice ribbon. It's a beautiful package. Absolutely gorgeous packaging. Big, thick book. Sorry, let me scoot in closer. I, I realize I'm acting like I'm closer than I really am. And then we have the ribbon to pull the cards out. Uh, full disclosure, I have looked at these, so this is broken. Now I can throw it away. But that's the way the deck comes with the paper band around it. And as uh, is typical of Hay House, it's a chunky-ass deck. Look at this. This is 10 cards fewer than a full tarot deck, and it is thicker this way than many, many tarot decks that I have with 10 cards more. So I'm already frustrated that it's going to be difficult, nearly impossible to shuffle. All right, here are the backs. Beautiful, um, soft colors, soft, gentle colors, and this gorgeous kaleidoscopic pattern on the back. I find that very pleasing. So let's start with Ant Spirit. Time to collaborate. And we have puzzle pieces there too. So time to collaborate and put something together. Antelope spirit, life is speeding up. Ooh, I like the messages. Armadillo spirit, set healthy boundaries. Badger spirit, have you ever seen, there's um, <laughs> up at the Cleveland Zoo, they have these little armadillos that are, they're not from the U.S., they're from a different country, and they're very small. And they have this, you know, hard shell, and it's not as textured as the armadillos here. And then their little legs, and they just go, brrr, they look like little cars. They look like, you know, little, little remote cars <laughs> running around. Very funny. Anyway, returning to our business here, Badger Spirit, be fearless and bold. I love Badger. Bat spirit, a rebirth is assured. Again, I really like these messages. I mean, how easy is this going to be to read? Lay them out and they're going to read themselves. Beaver spirit, lay a solid foundation. I'm trying to read on my screen rather than the cards, so I'm not like doing this thing. And so you can see them, you know, close to the camera. Bee spirit, sweet results away. Bobcat spirit, life is a mystery. Brown bear spirit, take time out. Buffalo spirit, the abundant universe will provide. And very well, you know, the phrases are very uh, a aligned with the creature and it's really intellectually obvious why this statement is with this creature. So there's a lot of congruency here, and I really like that. Like this, take time out. Okay, what does that mean with the bear? They hibernate. And buffalo spirit, the abundant universe will provide. What's that about? This was a source of so much to the First Nations that were on the plains. Um, they got food, they got clothing, they got shelter, they got tools and implements, so much came from this animal and they used every single bit of it. So that's abundance provided by the universe. Butterfly spirit, transformation is beautiful. And the artwork is absolutely gorgeous too. Uh, Gina Della Grataglia, I've always really liked her art. Canary spirit, sing your own song. Cat spirit, claim your independence. Speaking of cats, bye-bye. He's probably sleeping. And the door's closed, so maybe he'll join us. You know, put a message out there. Pie Wacket, come visit Luna. I imagine him running up the stairs and jumping on the back of the chair. Let's see what happens. Chameleon spirit, act as if. How interesting is that? Cow spirit, the miracles are endless. Cows and miracles. I'm not sure I'm hooking into that connection there, but coyote spirit, trust in divine detours. Look how beautiful they are. Crow spirit, co-create with spirit. I just saw an article today 
that said um, that r the intelligence of ravens exceeds that of great apes. Dear spirit, bring a gentle touch. And talking about the consciousness of corvids, of, you know, crows and ravens, it said something about they know what they know, and hence they know what they don't know as well. They're aware that there are things they don't know. So that that is, there's a consciousness there. And, you know, raven and crow typically being seen as, um, as particularly raven, as crossing from this realm to the other to bring the magic that they are a conduit or a carrier of magic. Dear spirit, bring a gentle touch. Dog spirit, be loyal to what you love. Oh, baby. Dolphin spirit, this and that are true. That's interesting. Dove spirit, be peace. Sometimes I can't tell it feels like some of these are thicker than others. There are some that I pull off and it's like, that's definitely one card, but I'm pulling this one and it's like, is that two? Because it feels thicker. Dove spirit, be peace. Dragonfly spirit, truth transcends illusion. Eagle, uh, spirit has your back. Electric eel, bring your ideas to your ideas to life. I thought it said ideals for a second. They're bringing your ideas to life. Elephant spirit, learn from the past. Elephant's memory. Flamingo spirit, embrace the in-between. Must be because in-between water and land, earth and sky. Fox spirit, think on your feet. Love the eyes. Frog spirit, clear out the clutter. And look at, I mean, not just the beautiful, beautiful rendering of the animals, but the um, the backgrounds and just the whole picture is beautiful, very pleasing to look at. She really does portray the animals in a realistic yet enhanced manner. Look at the uh, pattern here on the forehead. I mean, it looks like a real giraffe, but there's just something more to them absolutely love the artwork giraffe spirit see the big picture grasshopper spirit take a leap of faith look at his little crown and we have like uh, you know immediately what i see is henna patterns <laughs> on in the backgrounds of i don't know some or all i'll start paying more attention now Groundhog spirit. Yes, there's see, there's one up in the corner here. And they're all wearing like little crowns or jewelry. So so we're, you know, not just enhanced as far as appearance, but we're seeing them as spirits, as like the consciousness of these beings that are adorned. It's I really dig it. Groundhog spirit, time to let go. Hawk spirit, let spirit be your guide. Horse spirit. Freedom is yours. Hummingbird, be here now. Koala, spirit has a plan. Yeah, look at the, you know, the little crowns and bindies and headpieces and jewelry that they have on. Koi fish, spirit, there is always enough. This looks very much like um, the fish in the Lenormand cards that I've been using just the, the way it's shaped and the way it's turning. And in those decks, um, you look at the way things are, you know, facing. The fish is swimming this way. It's one thing. So these cards do have motion in them, and that can be very informative in a reading, too. Lion spirit. Be generous of spirit. Lizard. Dream the world into being. There's, is that, it, they're kind of like, I guess those are wings, but it almost looks like, you know, a leaf skeleton or something. Okay. Moth, surrender now. Ooh, I love that. Mouse spirit, tend to the small things first. Nightingale spirit, love is all around. 
Otter, you are never alone. Oh, babies, I love otters. Owl spirit, you see clearly now. Panther, reclaim your power. Mm. Parrot spirit, watch your words. <laughs> That's very good. Peacock spirit, let it shine. Oh, my. That's gorgeous. I love peacock feathers. Pig spirit, use your mind wisely. Pigs are also highly intelligent creatures. Porcupine spirit, time for beginner mind. Okay, that's going to be an interesting connection. I'd like to see how, how she explains that one. Rabbit spirit, now is a lucky time. Rhino spirit, overcome any obstacle. Sandpiper, be playful. Scarab beetle spirit, magic works through you. Hmm. Seahorse spirit, watch and wait. Skunk, know your worth. <laughs> Snake, time to heal. Spider, make your dreams real. Hmm, interesting. Make your dreams real. I guess, you know, the weaving of, weaving of the web. But there was a card before about bringing your dreams into reality, so. Squirrel, believe in yourself. Stag, take the lead. Hello, your majesty. Starfish open to infinite possibility. Swan, time for a deep dive. Come on. Turkey, give with gratitude and grace. Turtle, slow and steady wins the race. Vulture spirit, nothing is wasted. Indeed. Wasp, Sometimes life stings. Yes, the assholes of the air. Mm. Whale spirit, trust the great mystery. That's really nice. White raven, yeah, trust in the magic. Very good. Wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom. Wombat, <laughs> wombat spirit. Be at home. Have you ever seen wombats? But they've got like this pad. It's got like it's like leather. Smack smack. It's really tough. Right at their rump. Very funny stuff. Australia definitely made some weird creatures when it was coming into being there. Okay, porcupine spirit. I wanted to look that one up real quick, and then we will um, take a closer look at the book. Time for beginner mind. When porcupine spirit calls your name, you're being asked to adopt a beginner's mind and to approach situations with innocence and curiosity. The old confining stories no longer have a hold on you. Um, I'm looking for... Okay, porcupine asks you to be playful. Okay, here's, the, here's where she connects the animal with the message. This is protection message. Are you feeling prickly and defensive? And assuming you will be hurt before you've seen any sign that such a reaction is called for. So that's the time for beginner mind. That means to let go of your assumptions and your expectations and meet the moment just on its own merit. So, okay, I get that now. Let's look at the book. Uh, this is copyright 2018. And we have, and I have uh, um, several Colette Baron reads now. The Good Tarot, The Mystical Shaman Oracle, um, Wisdom of Avalon, and Wisdom of the Oracle. So, and I, you can look at all those and, you know, those reviews to know my opinion of Colette Baron Reed in overall. But let's take this deck on its own merit. How to work with the Spirit Animal Oracle. There's Welcome Seeker and then an Introduction. All right. Um, 
so, you know, the, the welcome and the introduction are kind of just advertisements. Something magical is stirring in the heart of our beautiful planet these days. Gosh, do I sound cynical today? I wonder why. Whew, can you feel it too? We've come to a time of great disconnection, unprecedented in, human, in the human story. I would agree with that. We're also at a crucial choice point in our evolution, an invitation to reclaim our essential truth that we are one in spirit and twined together in a unified consciousness that intrinsically connects every living thing on this earth. Those of us who are called to reconnect and release our false perceptions of a separated and disconnected world have in response begun again to remember. We feel a powerful longing for a deeper connection to life, to each other, to spirit, and to the planet as we enter a new era of accelerated awakening. Out of the darkest night, the line shine, light shines ever more brightly. And, uh, you know, absolutely right. Beautifully written, Colette. Absolutely well said. Um, the veils between the material world and the mystical are thinning, and many of us are hearkening to the call to renew the sacred connection between spirit and matter. We have come to have glimpses of the unity that connect all that is. The unity that connects all that is. And so we are choosing a direct and intimate dialogue with spirit for the highest good, turning to ancient mystical traditions, not just out of a desire to reconnect to something larger than ourselves, but for practical advice. Yes. Unlike the designated priests or priestesses of the distant past, dutifully carrying out the responsibilities determined by those appointed as spiritual leaders, modern mystics forge their own path. And they may not necessarily be psychics or even healers, but they are household practitioners of spiritual wisdom. Mothers, fathers, lawyers, baristas, artists, accountants, etc. Modern mystics are people of all ages, shapes, colors, and sizes. All along the spectrum of gender identities and sexual orientations, both sophisticated and simple in their approach to understanding the mysteries. I have to say I'm really loving this little intro here. This is just, this is the welcome. There are no barriers to a strong partnership with spirit other than the ones we have chosen to construct and can choose to remove at any time. All you need to become a modern mystic is an open mind, the curiosity of a child, and the willingness to enter a new kind of conversation, one that perhaps will seem at first unfamiliar, but one I promise your soul will recognize immediately. You will feel your heart's longing for magic come to life as you listen to the messages spirit has for you and feel your interconnectedness with spirit. Exhilaration and joy spring up when you experience your first epiphany, your first step into transformation. There's much we have forgotten and much we need to remember, but it will come back to us if we make time for dialogue with Spirit, who has been reaching out and speaking to us all along. Um, my guides have been talking to me all day long. I've been getting um, my numbers, you know, 111, 222, 333, all day. 1111 was the first one. So um, those are just my little taps that it's okay. It's okay. We're here. It's okay. You know. All right. Our ancestors knew the sacred language for this divine communication, as did the sages of classical civilizations and the wisdom keepers of indigenous traditions who had great reverence for the power of sacred dialogue between people and the divine. And I don't like that that's in past tense. Who have great reverence. The fact that you are reading this tells me that you have heard the call to open a conversation with spirit, with the intelligent, conscious universe that you are an intrinsic part of. Using this deck, you will learn how to tap into the wisdom of the hidden realms so that you may act in a manner that will bring purpose, meaning, magic, and prosperity to your life. Welcome, seeker, for you've come to the right place. Okay, and then she talks about what an oracle is. So the next section is the introduction, how oracle cards work, why this deck um, I am one of those called to the task of divine communication, and this oracle is my offering to you on behalf of Spirit, who inspired me to create it, channeling divine wisdom through me. Okay. Um, then there's a section about the spirit animals and their meanings. And then how to work with the spirit animal oracle. And then she has card spreads. Um, always ask your question with an open-ended potential for the cards to begin a conversation. Never ask a question that encourages a yes or no answer. Yes, then that's absolutely true. Um, with any, 
uh, divination tool like this unless you're using a tool that you, you're specifically looking for yes or no and and the spread with cards will be designed to do that you know to answer that way but yeah they need to be tell me what I need to know about type questions a gentle warning do not try to find certainty in a future that has not transpired as of yet or you rob yourself of your own power to create your world stand up and cheer ask only what you need to know to stay in alignment with your highest intentions and how to understand your circumstances with greater clarity your future is always only a potential or probability based on your vantage point and frequency at the time of the reading well put that there's no doubt that colette is talented hooked in psychic all that kind of stuff my the burr under my saddle is that the artist's name is not something right up in your face you have to look for it if you didn't look know to look you would assume that colette is the artist here and that bugs me but you know she has an agreement with her artists and gina della grataglia is the one she's used most often so i assume they've come to an agreement that is satisfactory for both of them Okay, then we have card spreads, one card, three card, uh, a three card version two, seven card new moon, a message for you from the cards. Okay, now she's just giving examples and she's saying I did this reading and asked this question and then she's pulling like an entire meaning from a card to illustrate how the cards answered over and over again gosh I'm not sure that's necessary the cards their messages and their meanings and let's go to the back here on the back we have a picture of Colette Baron Reed um, and the same thing that's written on the back of the box what I'm looking for yes about the artist Gina Della Grataglia so she is a native New Yorker who lives in Los Angeles and she has helped uh, with many decks she's a self-taught artist and then we have about the author all right let's get to it ancestors and allies guides and guardians I invite your presence here so that this oracle may show us its stuff <laughs> and bring us answers and information that is insightful, useful, applicable, <laughs> practical. And I offer you fresh water and I offer you air and fire and let's open the salt water as well because I haven't actually blessed this deck. Stay, stay, no stay there. Stay there, don't roll. Stay there! Alright, whatever. <laughs> All right. Now comes the moment of dread. Let's try to shuffle these cards. Pray for me. That took some doing. That took some hand strength. <laughs> um, all right. I think this is going to be a deck, and you know, so many others that are like this, particularly from Hay House. Uh, I really do think I'm going to start um, doing the spread and pick method because these also have that kind of sticky surface where they don't slide against each other. So when you pull it up and try you don't get like individuals, you get chunks of cards falling off together. And it's, it is difficult to really um, shuffle. And I want to look something up because I noticed that they had uh, the meanings had this protection meaning there's a there's the oracle message and then there's a protection message and I'm wondering if that is like an upright reversed thing um, get to know your deck play with it meditate on it 
Some guidelines. Card spreads. Shuffle making your show. Let this guidance come for highest good. Okay, I always say this prayer. Let this guidance come for the highest good. Show me the correct path and the way forward so that I may serve the light and bring beauty and goodness to the world. Show me the way. Let there only be light and love and let the truth be revealed. Okay, when you read the cards, upright cards will hold the oracle message in this guidebook. Cards that are upside down are guiding you to the protection message. So, let's flip some of these around, but then you got to try to shuffle them again. All right. So we flipped half the deck. Now I'm going to take, now I got to do this because they're just too hard to shuffle otherwise. And I'm only going to do this and then I'm going to spread them out. Because you don't need to, to be witnessing this struggle <laughs> going on for a long time. That card wants to come out. It has fallen twice. We're going to put that one there. Or I'm going to set it aside because I'm going to spread these out. Sorry. My shoulder's been good for several days. And today I put my hand on the railing and screwed it up again. And look at, see, do you see me spreading them out and how they're coming off in chunks rather than individual cards? It's difficult to get them spread out individually. Okay. That's all right. I'll figure out which one I need to do. All right. So we have one. I would like two more, please. For my friend Sherry. And for others that may be watching this. What does Sherry need to hear right now? Okay, there's one there. Oh, two came. All right. Let me just, let me see what else I get going over. There's a lot that want to jump out. But it was back here that I felt it. Ooh, right there. All right, they want me to take that one. And let's do one more. Why not five? I'm not feeling them. Nope. All right. So we're going to go with the first one that came out and then the next two together because that's they came out together. This is the first one. Sing your own song. Then we had the next two come out together. Make your dreams real. And oh, and there's two here as well. So we do have five. No wonder I wasn't feeling another one. This and that are true. And then we have Owl Spirit and Porcupine. Okay. Settle in. Number 12. Canary Spirit says, sing your own song. And we will be reading the Oracle message. Canary Spirit arrives to help you find your authentic voice and express what is in your heart. Free yourself to experience your inner light and let it shine as Canary Spirit sings to remind you of your inherent joy and to support you as you sing your own song. Now is the time to let the world know who you really are. Canary Spirit's message is that you are free to be yourself and express your most cherished desires. The world wants to hear your song. If your inquiry is about a relationship, you're being called to fully be yourself, for only then will you find harmony and joy. You can make mis... I need to slow down. You can make music with others so beautifully when your note rings true. So let's bring this down to a practical level here. There's some place where you are not being true to yourself, where you're just kind of giving in and going, well, okay, when, when you know, kind of modifying yourself in order to keep the peace in a situation is what I'm getting. So this is saying it's time to say how you feel and not just, you know, bite back your feelings or it doesn't feel like it's a huge thing but it's a chronic thing of just I'm you know 
to to keep the peace or to get along in this situation, I'll just alter who I am or not say, not speak my truth. Okay. Spider is what? 56. And we do, and this is Make Your Dreams Real, so we will be reading the protection message. Are you expecting your dreams to weave themselves into reality? Are you stuck in the sticky web of weaving dreams but never following through? The thread of intention isn't enough to make dreams a reality unless you do your part in the weaving. Spider Spirit wants you to know that your plans will remain ephemeral unless you commit to being productive and industrious for Spirit will not do it all for you. Magic needs to be instigated, so begin to make your dream a reality by taking action today. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? Can you release your limiting beliefs? Ding, 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 ding. That's the big one. That's the one that's standing out to me. Your dream is worthy of weaving. Today is a day to choose one small step towards your dream. Remember, spirit is your weaving partner. You just have to be the first one to bring the thread to the loom, then continue to do your part. And that's absolutely true. When you take um, a step in the direction of your purpose, your joy, your bliss, your destiny, uh, spirit meets you more than halfway. You can sit in a nice, safe place begging, 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 begging for help with something. Oh, please manifest this for me, spirit. Please, please, please. And scared shitless to take the first step. But once you take that step, spirit comes and meets you more than halfway. So off you go. And this, can you release your limiting beliefs? I think that this is connected to canary spirit, that my voice is not worthy of being here heard. I'm not as good as I'll never be. And that limits your voice. So this is saying you need to sing your own song, maybe literally, but certainly just your own creative um, voice coming out and getting rid of limiting beliefs in order to do that. And now Dolphin is number 20. And we're going to be reading the protection message for that one too. Which says, and the, on the card it says, this and that are true. When you most want to be acknowledged as right and see others as wrong, dolphin spirit appears as a reminder that the story of your suffering and righteousness is a little more complicated than you're admitting right now. Do you want to see things in black and white and be rigid in your ideas of what's correct and what is not? Release your rigidity and embrace the fluidity of life as you recognize the grays that remind you there are two sides to every story and upside to each downside and a blessing in every challenge. What you think is wrong may end up being right for you. So let dolphin spirit soften your heart so that you make the best decision at this time, playing with the possibilities that present themselves. So there are two things here. And the one is um, that tendency to righteousness, the tendency to make ourselves right and others wrong. And I'm talking about a personal situation here, not, you know, more out in the broad culture, but um, but we do it there too. But look to your up close um, interactions and any place where you might uh, just be thinking, you know, putting yourself in that position of right or needing to put yourself in that position of right in order to feel good about yourself. So we need to weed that out too. And what I'm getting connecting these together here is about being afraid to make a mistake, being afraid to put yourself out there for fear of appearing wrong. Okay. Okay. And the other end of that was um, what you think is wrong may end up being right. So we're talking about kind of releasing judgment about externals. The first one was about internals, that coming away from the black and white, right and wrong. Now we're talking about externals and coming away from the black and white, right and wrong. And looking at how fluid things can be. That's like that old Chinese story of... You know, the, the man that had these wonderful sons and um, the emperor called them out to war, but the one son had a broken leg and, you know, and you, well, the, the son broke his leg. That was the first thing. It's like, oh, this is horrible. But then they get called to war and he can't go because his leg is broken. Okay, well, that broken leg isn't so horrible now, right? 
And the whole story goes through all these things that, that flip, that flip from right to wrong, right to wrong, good to bad. The judgment flips. It's fluid. It's slippery as hell. So this is the reminder. Dolphin is the reminder. Dolphins who are very slip through the water, you know, the reminder that things are are not what we judge them to be. Our judgment is our perception of them. There is not inherent good or bad in anything of the universe. It is. The isness is what is, you know. So this is overall just talking about um, pulling away your own judgments of your creative voice and what you want to say. And it doesn't even have to be your creative voice, your intellectual voice, my opinions, what I believe. My belief system, you know, that can also be what is being talked about here that I don't want to put it out because I don't feel smart or because it's going to be different than this person's opinion. Knowing, of course, that it is entirely up to you to whom you offer your opinions. You do not have to put your opinions out to people that are going to abuse you for it. That's an entirely different thing. All right. Okay. Let's come down to owl spirit here. You see clearly now. And we do the oracle message. Owl spirit arrives to remind you that the wisdom within you is informed by your keen senses and the wisdom within the con consciousness we all share. Uh, even in the darkest night, the owl sees clearly and is guided by every sense it has, including the first sense of intuition. Right now, your sensitivities are turbocharged and you're receiving messages from all directions. Owl spirit reminds you to be wise and pay attention to what's between the lines, what is invisible to the naked eye, what cannot be heard with the ears, and what others may not be able to perceive. So all the clairs. With all your senses aroused, you have much knowledge available to you. Clarity will come as you sit with all that you are sensing, allowing your intuition to guide you in understanding the whole and not just the parts. I thought I just heard my baby. Okay. Um, let your wisdom arise and be your guide as you trust the acuity of all your senses. Intuition is real and can provide the clarity you need to understand your situation right now. Your relationship, your finances, your job, whatever it is, you can see the truth clearly now. So in the context of this reading, you know, without a question, what do you need to know? This is talking about just really being centered and grounded in your own body and the information that your senses bring to you. Now, Whenever we have the sensory input coming in, our first instinct is to judge. So this is talking about, you know, coming past the dolphin here, just taking that sensory information and believing, believing the information that you're being given. So they're talking about the wisdom of the universe coming in through the senses. And, you know, like I said, the clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, clairsmelliant, clair I can't remember what that one's called. <laughs> And uh, Claire Tastians, I'm not sure what that's called, but um, and Claire Sentians can cover it all that you know you bring it in through your senses. So um, trust this information and kind of let that be your grounding as well that you've got this connection to spirit communication. And the wisdom that comes to you uh, through the natural world and through your senses. And that we suspend judgment and suspend limiting beliefs and let that true voice come out. So is this about you doing readings maybe? You know, um, trusting more the wisdom that is coming in and getting your judgments and limiting beliefs out of the way, which is what these two were saying, so that you can sing your own song, so you can put those messages out for the people that need to hear them. And then number 48 is porcupine. Porcupines that have the cutest fucking voices of the entire animal kingdom if you've never seen him, uh, go on YouTube. You're on YouTube right now. Just search on YouTube um, Teddy the Porcupine and watch those videos because it's the goddamn cutest thing you've ever heard in your life. Just adorable. 
Okay, Porcupine Spirit, time for beginner mind, and we have to read the protection message. Are you feeling prickly and defensively? Gosh, this was the one I just read, right? <laughs> Assuming you'll be hurt before you have seen that such a reaction is called for. Perhaps an old sense of shame and guilt is causing you to be cynical and wary when you're meant to be open and curious. Self-protection is a good thing, but you may be protecting yourself from something that will not actually harm you, but instead will bring you abundance, happiness, and love. Remember your innocence, and you will see what you've been overlooking. Porcupine quills are filled with air, allowing a porcupine to float in water. Now is the time to let your innocent nature keep you buoyant. Okay, so self-protection is a good thing, but you may be protecting yourself from something that will actually not harm you. Now, when we are defended, um, when we shut out part of our experience or part of our perception, uh, and, and here I want to talk specifically about... Um, and because this is fresh in my mind, I was reading it on a, a Facebook group today. Somebody asking, you know, how can I shut my psychic gifts down, basically? And the thing is, you, you don't. This is part of your whole makeup. And if you shut those down, you know, you can't choose that I just want to shut these messages off, but I still want to retain my perception, you know, for everything else. And you can't really do that. And when you shut something down wholesale like that, or attempt to, um, you're going to be closing yourself off to so many other experiences as well. It's kind of like when you have, um, and this might be getting to the heart of the message here, when you have trauma and you have emotions, emotional energy that was too much to bear at the time of the trauma, and so it get, you shove it down into your body and out of your perception, Um and you say, I am going to push that experience out of my mind and lock it away. You are locking away access to other emotional energy as well, because that emotional energy was a true reaction, a true processing of the trauma that happened. And when you choose not to feel it, first of all, it's like eating a meal and never taking a shit, but you drive that energy into your tissues and it has to go somewhere. And, and you, you hold it back. And so you hold back the capacity to, to feel your full capacity to experience life on an emotional level and to really feel what's going on around you. When you choose to heal that trauma and to process that energy, which may become infected when you push it into your, your body and you don't process it, it can become infected. Infected grief is depression. Infected anger is rage. Um, so you, you sh cut off your full range of emotional access. And when you heal that, you reclaim the energy in a free-flowing manner that's not locked down and tied to this one thing. You process it through and it releases all this emotional energy and releases a lot of tension from your muscles as well. So um, then you regain access. So if you do have a gift and you're not comfortable with it, and um, there are things that you really truly don't want to experience, the better thing to do is to have a chat with your guides and ask them to be a filter for you. Ask them, you know, please help me here. I understand this is part of my makeup and possibly part of my gifts, but I'm not ready for it right now. I'm not ready for it. It's making me uncomfortable in these ways. And be very specific about why it's making you comfortable because your guides can help you in a lot of ways. Maybe they can help you by gently um, leading you to the situation where you can um, process old trauma where you can heal, where you can come more into acceptance of your gifts in a more measured, safe way, right? So you can ask your guides, please filter. Here's what I need. Here's what I want. I mean, talk with your guides, everybody. You should be doing this on a daily basis. They're there to help you. And everybody has them. Yes, everybody does. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting here is that we need to kind of clear old stuff and 
allow the new stuff to come through. There's no doubt at all that you're psychic, that you have messages to deliver, but it's time to really look at how you limit yourself and kick those out of the way. Stop comparing yourself to other people. There's a, um, a green tar practice for kids called Tar Tames the Eight Fears. And in it, when they're talking about the snake of jealousy, and they say, there's always someone better than you, so what? And there's always someone not as good as you, so what? So what? It doesn't say anything about you. And it's also fun when you find yourself judging throwing a judgment out about something, oh, that's blah, 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 compared to what? Ask yourself compared to what? Because it's all relative, right? Judgment is all relative. So I love these cards. I hate that they're so thick and unshuffleable, but they're certainly workable and worth working with. Um, so thank you again, Sherry, and so many blessings to you, my dear, for this wonderful, wonderful gift. I hope you got something out of that reading. And I love seeing you every time you pop up on my live streams. I love seeing, you know, friends that I actually know. And I have a few of them that come to my lives. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you, oh, oh my God. Hold up. Okay. I don't know why it does that sometimes. I just went for a little ride there. If you'd like to send me a donation, if you find value in the material that I put out, I really welcome that and bless you for that. If you would like to buy me a gift deck, I will read for you. And I really appreciate that as well. If you would like to join my Patreon, please do. My patrons at the mid-level, at the priestess level, are getting exclusive astrological content that is clearing up the mystery of what the hell am I looking at with a birth chart. By the end of this, you should know how to find your way through a chart and be actually able to read your natal chart, to use your natal chart as the you know, the schematic, the owner's manual that it is, and live a much more empowered life because of it. Uh, I appreciate just all of you guys being here. I'm slowly crawling back and getting back into the swing of creation. I mean, we've been our, we have been so under emotional assault. Um, basically in 2016, we got into a toxic marriage with a narcissist and we're trying to break up with this narcissist and he's getting violent on us. And anybody that really understood to the core what I just said, I'm so sorry, sister or brother. You know, not only men are narcissists. So um, it's it's tough, but I'm crawling out and I hope you are too. Hang in there, everybody. Do resist bot. Um, wash your hands, wear your mask, keep yourself safe. We will get through this. We're almost to the end of one of the ugliest parts. It's not going to be over on January 20th by a long shot, but it's shown itself. And the last four years of Capricorn or uh, Pisces, Pluto through Capricorn, now we can change it. We've seen it. We've seen how ugly it can get. Now we can do something about it. So I will hope I will see you next time. God, I can't talk. <laughs> hope I'll see you next time. I know I will be doing a live either tomorrow or Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. I try to post those as soon as I know on my uh, page so you can be uh, notified. So hit the notification bell as well. Subscribe, hit the bell, smash that like button. I hate that. Hit the like button. Stroke the like button. Give it a, a little kiss. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting silly. Thank you so much for hanging around, you guys. I'll see you next time. See you Monday for a Tarot Unboxing Wednesday for a live stream in the evening. Until then, this is the Zen Witch. Blessed be you guys. Thank you.